Hello guys, today we're going to have a look at some wireless modules. I got a question on the forum a couple of weeks back uh, asking me why do I use uh, expensive XB modules when you can get these uh, cheap uh, around about $2 modules on eBay and uh, I hadn't used them before so today we're going to have a look at uh, these modules, how to set them up and see if they're as good as uh, an XB. So why are these so much cheaper than an XB? And the answer is very simple. Uh, if you look at the circuit here, we just have a crystal oscillator. We have some inductors, a capacitor, a couple of transistors, and some resistors. There is there is nothing complicated on this circuit. Whereas the XB contains an entire microcontroller. So the microcontroller knows that it has received a full byte. It sends that full byte. You can put in uh, controls so that the uh, it even gives a signal to say that it has received the byte successfully. Um, you don't need to do that, of course, and, and we don't do that in the uh, RC tractors because um, it would, would require more pins, and we kind of want to use all the pins of the Arduino for functions on the tractor. But this this could uh, could lose the signal, or the signal could become uh, distorted. The reason being that these um, these very simple. Uh, transmitters all all it does is it, you supply power here and then when you put your sing signal on this pin all you do is turn on this oscillator so it's not doing anything smart you're just switching on this oscillator at 315 megahertz so when you put a we'll say you're, you're sending binary so you, you put a one so you put five volts on this pin that turns it on you turn it off uh, is the zero so uh, in that manner you send your signal but it could mistake the, the receiving transmitter could um, miss part of this code and what you receive could be the wrong data uh, we'll have a look at that later as to how how difficult it is to receive proper data with these but um, from reading it looks like uh, we should be able to send serial data with it fairly simply the only thing is that the receiver here, it's a little bit more complex. It has an amplifier and uh, it has a little bit of control in this because uh, this this receiver is going to constantly search for this signal and as a result it will ramp up and down its amplifier. So when you actually transmit this signal, uh, the amplifier could be at the wrong setting. But once it starts to receive the proper signal, it will adjust it adjust the amplification of the receive signal so that uh, you get um, so that you get the proper uh, proper signal in or so that you receive the proper data but to to make sure that the amplifier is at the right uh, amplitude when you send your signal you have to send a preamble so you send a little bit of data ahead of the important data so this first bit of data will probably not come through properly but the follow on data should come through correctly because the amplifier should have adjusted. Now, another thing that you'll notice about these uh, these uh, modules or these um, transmitters and receivers, uh, there's no antenna there, there's no whip, there's no inverted F, there's nothing there. And the reason for that is that at 315 megahertz, which is the frequency these all operate at, you need a quite a big antenna for that, so an IFA would be absolutely massive. It'd be wouldn't work at all, and a whip antenna is pretty long. So what they do is they leave a little hole here for you to solder in a piece of wire, and we're going to go through the calculations for the length of that wire now. I'll try not to bore you too much with the maths, but uh, just so you understand the how we arrive at the length of the antenna. Uh, first, we need to calculate a wavelength. And a wavelength is equal to the speed of light, which is roughly 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, over the frequency. So in our case, we have 3 by 10 to the 8 over 433 by 10 to the 6, because it's 433 megahertz. That gives us a wavelength of 0 0.692 meters, or 692 millimeters. Now, what we want to create is a quarter wave monopole. So we have to divide our wavelength by 4 to get the length of our antenna. 
So our antenna needs to be 173 millimeters long. Now, if, if you look at this transmitter, you know that ground plane is tiny. There, there's very, very little there. So I'm not sure how well this uh, antenna is actually going to radiate, because uh, you know the, the bigger your ground plane, generally the better your antenna radiates. So I'm not sure about how long this range is going to be and also the size of the ground plane can affect the uh, resonant frequency of the antenna too so it, it's probably good enough I mean like we're only talking a couple of meters and a wavelength of uh, or a wavelength at 433 megahertz is, is pretty long so I would imagine we'll, we'll get a right few meters out of this we can uh, test the distance uh, later on and see how, how it actually works out Okay, so for my antenna, I have this uh, this wire. It's a solid wire. That that's what you're going to want, really. Uh, so single core wire. Um, I'm not sure the thickness, but you know I picked this up in uh, Maplins, so it shouldn't be. You should be able to get it uh, in any kind of um, hobbyist electronic shop. So we want roughly uh, 170 millimeters, 173. So. There's our 173 antenna. So if you look at that, that is a hell of a lot longer than our XB antenna. Uh, I'll, I'll show you it uh, compared to the XB antenna in a little while. Um, so what I'm going to do now is instead of measuring the other three, I'm going to cut them exactly the same length as this. That should help keep the resonant frequency closer than if uh, if I was to go individually measuring each uh, antenna. So hopefully that'll work all right. And uh, I'll solder these up and then we'll be able to test them. Okay so here is our antenna mounted on our transmitter and as you can see our antenna is much much longer than the XB antenna. Now the reason is obviously that this is working at 2.4, 2.45 gigahertz around about that area and uh, obviously the wavelength is much smaller at higher frequencies. So uh, the thing to notice about that is that uh, whereas this doesn't look terribly out of place on the tractor, okay, so you could you could kind of imagine that as some sort of shortwave antenna for uh, tractor to tractor comms maybe, but this on the other hand, I mean, there's no tractor on the planet with an antenna that long, you know. You know multiply the length of that by 32 times. That's a huge antenna to have, like it's the length of an antenna you get on a ship so obviously that's going to look out of place but that doesn't mean that we can't uh, we can't use it uh, maybe maybe you can hide it in the tractor some way or put it under the tractor maybe then you'd, you'd kind of have your radiation coming out uh, in all directions but you'd miss the upward radiation which wouldn't be great so I don't know, Let, let's not uh, worry about how you'd hide the antenna for now. Uh, let's just continue with the uh, with the testing. Oh, one thing I meant to mention was uh, this uh, green material. Uh, that would that would affect your antenna resonance because that uh, would be a dielectric material that the antenna would be resonating through. So if you really wanted to be uh, perfect, you'd remove that material. But I'm not too worried about this. I'm, it's going to re resonate close enough to where we want it to, so I'm not going to worry about that for this. Um, so next thing to do is hook this into the breadboard and hook it up to an Arduino. One thing I forgot to say: uh, we're looking at these long antennas here. This is a radio module. I'm going to test out as a possible replacement for the XB. And um, these are pretty cheap. These were, I think, uh, they were four euros each. And as you can see, they're considerably smaller than the XB even. So my plan is that these would hopefully fit up into the cab of the tractor, so that you get a pretty ideal radiation pattern. Now, if you look, uh, we're just talking about antennas. That's monopoles here. This is an inverted F. So it's fed here. This is a grounding stub. So that's the pin where it's grounded, and then the antenna has this meandered structure, and that uh, reduces the length of the antenna. So that's how 
this chip gets so small it doesn't need a monopole it uh, just uses an inverted F and this uh, this, this inverted F would have a better uh, a match than the monopole antenna that's why this uh, you have this grounding strip see uh, normally or the first step that they done was they took a monopole and they bent it over to uh, make a shorter antenna so if, if you ignore this grounding stub but then you uh, introduce a capacitive element so you counteract that with this grounding stub to get a, a pretty good antenna I'll be doing a video on this uh, module in the next few weeks so uh, make sure and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that video we'll be seeing if it's a good replacement for the XB and if so I'll be replacing all the XBs in my tractors with these smaller modules so make sure and subscribe there should be a subscribe button in the top right hand corner for uh, our top right hand corner of the video ok so we're ready to do a little test here I have my FTDI cable connected to uh, my laptop via the USB port and we're going to test a little program that I've put on the Arduino here and the program sends a hexadecimal value from 0 to 10 uh, it sends it in intervals of half a second and then when it reaches 10 it waits for uh, 5 seconds and then repeats the cycle of 10 again and what we're going to see is on this side we'll see the ASCII value and on this side we'll see the hexadecimal value so we should see here uh, 0 to 9 appear when we uh, give the Arduino power so let's do that, we'll connect the battery now ok now you can see the values appear in here get to 9, now we're waiting for the 5 seconds and uh, then it should cycle through again and count to 9 again yep, here we go ok so we see that our program works perfectly when we are directly connected to the uh, to the FTDI cable so now what I'm going to do is connect that's our receiver and already we're getting lots of noise so if we didn't even send anything and we got a huge amount of noise there so basically what's connected here is that we have a ground we have a 5 volts and we have the uh, received data pin that's going to the FTDI cable now on this side we have this was the ground that we needed for the FTDI we don't need that now we have our transmit pin so we'll connect that to transmit on the transmitter and uh, we also have power and ground connected to this transmitter as well so now we plug in this transmitter if this works we should see our 0 to 9 appear on the screen again ok so we just seem to be getting a huge amount of noise um, that doesn't seem to be working at all so we'll have to have a, another attempt at this and see can we get anything resembling the resembling good data ok so our uh, UART attempt didn't work so we need to be a little bit more inventive so if you go to the address in the uh, you can see on the screen now this you'll find a library that uh, contains lots of uh, programs for different uh, radio modules including the one that we're looking at now and it also includes ones that I intend to work on in the future so it's uh, probably a good idea to install this uh, library now so on the image in the screen now you'll see a download uh, link for a zip folder so you need to download that zip folder and I uh, store it somewhere in your Arduino uh, folders and then uh, if you go to the uh, Arduino guide on using uh, or installing libraries you'll find an automatic installation for libraries where you just uh, click on the uh, on the tools section to um, use the uh, automatic install and you just 
uh, select the zip folder from wherever you've stored it and the Arduino IDE will automatically install that and uh, then you'll be able to have a look down through the examples and you'll find uh, different options for the uh, modules that we're using. So now if you've installed the uh, the library correctly and if you go to your file examples uh, you should see a new section radio head and if you go in to radio head all the different uh, wireless uh, modules that you can now control are available so go into ASK and the two that we're going to use are ASK receiver and ASK transmitter so you need to upload uh, one of these to two separate Arduinos so one is going to be a receiver one is going to be your transmitter and then we'll uh, test it out and see does it work okay so I've opened the uh, serial monitor in Arduino and uh, we'll just connect the battery up now and see if our new code is going to send uh, data successfully so in the battery and we have data you appear to be receiving data I'm not sure if it's uh, it's very consistent but it does appear to be receiving something maybe it has stopped mm. so it looks like when I put the antennas closer it works a lot better Maybe that's a sign that I don't have enough power or something. Actually, if I move them further away, we also seem to have a better connection. So maybe I was in the near field of those antennas. Maybe that was the problem. Okay, so this uh, code seems to work pretty good. It's maybe not as reliable as the XP, but uh, then again, the XP has lots of error checking and uh, other features. I mean, uh, that's what you're paying for when you buy an expensive module like that. But this seems to work okay. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'd install it in an RC tractor. You know, the antenna is big. Not 100% guaranteed the data is going to be okay. There's a couple of downsides, but... Uh, still it, it it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good wireless module i'd probably use it for something that can uh, survive a little bit of error rather than uh, the rc tractor because uh, you know if we miss a couple of bytes in the rc tractor our tractor could plow into the wall or something that you know we don't really want to be missing information if we can at all avoid it um, Okay, so I have the uh, transmitter and receiver connected to the oscilloscope now. So the receiver is connected to channel 1, which is the yellow line. And that's the output of the receiver. And the input of the transmitter is connected to channel 2, and it's a blue line. So if you keep an eye on the screen there, I'll connect the battery. And as you see, our blue line uh, went to 3.7 volts, and our yellow line followed shortly afterwards but our yellow line drops off so what that tells us is our um, our, our transmitter is or well I'd, I'd say it's probably the um, the receiver more than the transmitter so we'll say the receiver is uh, is just outputting a pulse when it receives the waveform because I'm pretty sure this uh, there's nothing in this transmitter so it's probably just constantly transmitting a pulse even though our receiver only outputs and goes off I think the signal from the transmitter is constantly pulsing but we have a kind of a set pulse lead on the receiver so that maybe is making things a little bit tricky for us to try and get it perfectly set up with our serial of our Arduino 
what what might you use this for? Well, if you think about it, basically all we're doing is flicking a switch here. So if you had say maybe you want to open your garage door or something, you could you could easily use that to open a garage door. Just push the button on this transmitter, gets the signal high on the receiver, and the door goes up. Push the button again and the door goes down. Yeah, that's the kind of simple application that I would expect that this is actually intended for. Something that is simple just requires one pulse and you're not trying to send any complica complex data with it. And if uh, you keep an eye on the videos, there will be a video up on a module I think will be able to replace the XP and it will be a lot cheaper. So if you liked that video, give it a thumbs up and uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and keep up to date with all the uh, RC tractor updates and different electronics that you might come across. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot over to the forum. And uh, other than that, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.